Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem. This is a postmortem of my uh, Blitz Chess game number uh, 208. My opponent was uh, white here, she kicked off with knight f3. So I play knight f6, looks like that's the top choice, a very flexible kind of response. And then uh, d4, c4, g3, maybe g3 is uh, pure ready. c4 is uh, <clears throat> maybe more of an English than a ready, but uh, I don't really know <laughs> the fine distinctions here. I play e6, which appears to be one of the main moves. And um, I'm just thinking of setting up a Nimzo Indian type of setup in case he plays. Uh, he can always transform into a <clears throat> into a um, queen's pawn opening by just playing a d4 here. In fact, that's a top choice. But um, he has other moves. Knight c3 would be uh, more like uh, English, and uh, b3, which he played, uh, it's a bit unusual. g3 is more like a ready, so I don't know what the b3 is. <laughs> if it has a name or anything. Um, and so I play an unusual move here in return. Uh, let's see. So the top choice here was uh, d5, just uh, directly challenging the center and getting this very funny line of pawns here. Um, but I play the move bishop b4. I was thinking, well, this, this setup is uh, a lot like a Nimzo Indian, and he might bring his knight here. And if he doesn't, then, then this pawn is pinned for a little bit. So maybe it causes him a little bit of discomfort. Um, if we look at it <clears throat> from the point of view of the... Uh, engine. The engine thinks that was not the best move. It uh, thinks probably d5 or c5, yeah, putting pawns in the center, knight c6, um, are better. But this is not like it uh, gives away a huge advantage or anything. They're still, uh, we're still in the range of a typical typical opening advantage for um, white. And in fact, the way white plays, the engine doesn't really approve of. So we, we uh, stay pretty equal here through most of this opening. So I'm just going to make normal developing moves. My opponent plays g3 to develop his bishop along here, so now um, this is looking like a ready to me. Uh, so that's why that's why I gave it the tag, a ready opening. Um, <clears throat> and so I am, with this move c6, I'm preparing to play uh, d5 and just set up a pawn triangle, because obviously his, his bishop is going to g2, it goes there the next move. And I want to be able to play this move and, and have a, uh, just kind of restrict the scope of this bishop so it doesn't uh, get too powerful. So he takes, and um, this is an interesting choice here. Um, you can take either way according to the chess engine, either C takes or E takes. Now with C takes, you get a symmetrical uh, structure with the pawns, um, and your bishop is still locked in behind this pawn, but it can come out on the other side. Um, <clears throat> e takes, I thought there's a little bit of uh, asymmetry in the position, sometimes makes them more interesting to play, and immediately there's an uh, avenue for the bishop, so it's good for uh, development. So my opponent uh, castled here. I went with the bishop to e6, and uh, he played a3, kicking kicking my bishop, and um, I just retreated to uh, e7 here. Wasn't really sure where to put the bishop. Um, looks like bishop d6 is uh, the engine-approved choice. So um, I was thinking about this square, but uh, I didn't know uh, what, what good the bishop was doing there, since it seems to be just hitting um, this little pawn triangle here and doesn't seem to be... Uh, doing much. So anyway, I retreated all the way back, and that leaves uh, at least this uh, file open here. But it does clog up the e-file, so <clears throat> I suppose the other, other move would have been better. Okay, so my opponent could play queen c2 here. That's the uh, top choice. He plays d4. And uh, somehow there's a, there's a bit of an advantage to black after that. What is it? a5? Yeah, I mean, he has maybe weakened his structure over here a little bit. You know, uh, now that I look at this, maybe one idea... No, I guess not. This this pawn on the a3 is well protected. I was thinking for a second, maybe bishop d6, queen e7 to put pressure on that pawn, but he's got a knight, bishop and a rook on it, so it's probably not going anywhere. Anyway, I just uh, move my queen up, uh, thinking to maybe exchange off the light squared bishops. He plays rook e1, ready to, getting ready to push in the center. And now I, I go ahead with my plan, bishop h3, and he just retreats the bishop, which is an interesting way to play. He prefers to keep his bishop, um, but it does create some uh, weaknesses here. Um, there's, uh, his king no longer has any moves, <laughs> and so uh, certain tactical ideas show up in these positions where your opponent has uh, retreated his bishop, and we'll see that in a little bit. So I just played h6. I didn't want uh, his knight coming into this square and chasing my bishop away. Once I've got my bishop established on h3, I might as well uh, keep it there and see if I can cause as much discomfort as possible. So I didn't want to make it easy for him to uh, chase that bishop away. So he develops his knight. I get my queen out of the way so that um, my knight needs to have a, 
uh, a route into the game. I could have kept the queen there. Let's back up and see if the engine has a comment on this. The engine likes bishop f5. Interesting. Bishop f5, queen e6, queen d8. Okay, staying on the d file. Or going to e6. Yeah, I'm not sure about queen e6. That's a very funny looking move to me. Um, and uh, I guess worrying about the knight some other time. Knight bd7. Okay, well, it does have the idea of moving the queen out of the way and developing the knight to d7. So that's what I was doing. And um, I honestly wasn't sure where the best square for the queen was. So just getting it out of the way. Um, now, white can uh, launch a minority attack. This is the uh, problem with the setup. I have a majority of pawns over here and an open file for my. Uh, open line for my light squared bishop, um, but uh, the pawns can come under attack, so uh, white has a plan of advancing his a and b pawns and uh, creating an eventual weakness on c6. So uh, that's a long-term strategy that white has in this position. Um, but he goes for um, <clears throat> a different plan, which is um, knight here, which is interesting, but, but has a tactical flaw, which you'll see in the game. So right now, I just played knight to e4, and the knight is hitting this pawn, and the bishop is covering these squares. So, so the beginnings of a tactic are, are starting to shape up. Um, but he plays knight f to uh, d2 to challenge my knight. And um, knight takes d2. Yeah, knight takes d2. Okay, now that's just a simple exchange. I think f5 is the best move here, which I um, probably should have thought about some more. It, it, uh, if he exchanges, then I get a strong pawn on uh, e4. But my idea was to play the other knight to f6, just to support my knight, so if he exchanges, then I have a, a good knight here. That's, that's a good outpost for the knight. Um, and now it says his best move is to exchange, but he played the move uh, knight to c5. And now you'll see immediately this tactic pops up. Knight takes f2, which is the, what I was talking about. So whenever um, you have a pawn, which is guarded only by the king. He should always consider a sacrifice against that pawn because it forces the king out of position, and uh, <clears throat> and that can lead to uh, lead to interesting complications. And um, the reason why this tactic works, though, I mean, I could have played it here, and it's not particularly good. For example, uh, knight here will just force the engine to evaluate it. King takes. The engine is laughing at this tactic. Um, I can play, you know, my bishop, my knight is not in position to jump in. That's one difference. And um, the other thing is there's no target here on, um, on uh, c4, c5. Okay, so let's look at what happened to the game. I went knight f, d2. He went, I went knight to f6 instead of trying the tactic here. And then he went knight to c5. And now the tactic actually works. Knight takes f2. So one difference is um, this knight is ready to jump into the game after I sacrifice this knight. And the other difference is this, this knight over here is, is a bit of a target. So let's watch how it went. Knight takes, king takes, and that's pretty much forced. Uh, if, I, if he doesn't take, he would, he would just move his queen and uh, queen to b3, knight takes h1. Yeah, I could grab the uh, <coughs> bishop in the corner. I've gotten rid of his good bishop. I've picked up a pawn, and I'm just winning. So king takes, right move. And then um, I play knight g4 check immediately. That was almost instinctive, but it looks like the best continuation here is bishop takes c5. And what this does, I play this on the next move. What this does is um, it opens up uh, this file for the queen. And uh, now knight here check and queen here is mate. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is a pretty uh, desperate situation for white. Uh, but he has a move here. He has the move e4. And now What's good here? Bishop to e7, bishop to b6. It's interesting. I, I wouldn't play bishop e7 covering up the queen. I would probably come back here. e takes d5 and queen to d8. Huh. And uh, so that that's, uh, it still says, you know, it's funny. The computer is just taking its time uh, getting its piece back. I mean, um, Black is a whole piece down, and uh, white has even gotten a pawn back, so so it's strictly uh, just a piece down. Oh, no, no, I take it back. I take it back. <clears throat> right, black got his piece back, so the pieces are even, and it's just a matter of pawns, and the pawns are even, um, but it thinks this is the best way to play. Huh. Okay, so that is interesting. That's 
Um, anyway, when I played the tactic, what I was thinking of was the move knight g4 check. And uh, you see that was a second choice, but it's not the uh, the best. Anyway, there's only one move for the king. king. If the king comes up to f3, it gets into trouble. So the king goes back to g1. And now um, there's this latent threat of queen here, checkmate. <laughs> so I, I get to move my bishop with tempo, threatening mate, and he has to deal with it. But uh, the move e4, once again, is a good response. And now I just retreat the bishop to b6. So similar to the other line, but uh, and it says he should play uh, e takes d5 here as well on queen d7. He played the move e5. So uh, so I have the advantage here. Uh, I've won a pawn, and uh, and I've somehow uh, maybe weakened his king side. But he got a strong pawn here, and uh, I don't play properly from this point forward. It says if you look at the engine, it strongly prefers an immediate f6, and. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> that's, that's a very logical move. I don't know why I didn't play it. <laughs> so I avoid playing the move f6 and uh, just get into trouble. So I start with the move queen d7. I think, um, you know, I was wanting to bring my rook over into the game before playing f6, maybe. Queen d7. But now he, he gets uh, going with bishop g2. He starts uh, putting pressure on my pieces immediately. And this guy has nowhere to go, the bishop. So I have to exchange it off. And now... Um, a lot of my attack is dissipated, and uh, he has the advantage of these uh, strong pawns. So I think, um, going back to my original question here, why why is f6 so much stronger than a move like queen d7? It's because um, time is very important in this position. You know, if I so this this queen d7 move is kind of a lazy move and uh, easy going somewhat. So it gives White time to uh, start making some uh, counterattacking moves. Whereas f6 immediately uh, challenges the uh, center and forces him to uh, take action. Let, let's examine f6. So f6 um, says he can either take it or play um, e6. Maybe I'm a little bit more worried about uh, a little bit more worried about him playing e6, kind of jamming up my development. Then it says I have knight to e5. That is a strange move. Knight to e5. What happens if pawn takes knight? <laughs> oh, it, the pawn can't take the knight because of, of the pin. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I, I noticed this pin during the game. So uh, the, uh, the d-pawn is pinned, so this uh, pawn on e5 is effectively only defended by the rook. And so when you play a move like f6, you're, you're immediately threatening just to win material. So that's one point. Okay, so e6 to preserve the pawn. Knight e5 anyway, um, because if uh, rook takes, pawn takes, and his pawn can't take it. So uh, then knight to b3, challenging my knight. And knight to c4, hitting his bishop. Pretty interesting uh, change there. I think eventually uh, this pawn is going to become weak, and uh, I have the move bishop to c3. No, he plays bishop to c3, and I have the move bishop takes e6. Yeah, so I can just grab the pawn with my knight out of the way. Okay, so that's the way to get an advantage. Um, so right in this position, uh, you know, I played my tactic, but I need to follow it up correctly to uh, to keep an advantage. So I play queen d7. He trades off the the bishop, and now it's about an even game. And I'm also starting to worry at this point about my knight, <laughs> which has no squares to go to. Um, you see, these are all covered by his pieces. So uh, the move um, h. 3 here is going to trap my knight. So I wanted to do something about that. It says queen f5 is, is the first choice, and h5, which I played as the second choice. So queen f5, how does this help? I mean, suppose he plays... Uh, oh, <coughs> it helps because I'm threatening uh, queen to f7. He needs to protect against that. So that's a good way to play. So um, he would go knight f3 here, blocking my view of uh, f2. Queen f2, I meant, and then I can play h5 and uh, not lose the pawn. So that's a nice, uh, nice little tempo gaining move. The queen to um, queen to f5 there. Okay, so let's back up. I played the move h5 immediately, and uh, he kicks my knight, and uh, I have only one square to go to, and then I'm losing my h pawn. 
Yeah. And uh, now, now it's an even game. You know, it's uh, from from a uh, <laughs> winning position to a slight advantage to an even game. Uh, how quickly they fade. So, uh, but the game continues. I'm doing my. Uh, I'm just developing my pieces and trying to get them out. Again, I had uh, opportunities here to play. Um, F6. Oh, it doesn't like F6 anymore. Okay, so my, my opportunity to play F6 is, is gone, I guess. Um, but this somehow is not working. Bringing my rooks over seems logical, but uh, I don't have a lot of uh, room to maneuver here. Okay, F6 in this position, maybe. Yeah, I just need to create some space for my pieces, and uh, F6 is another way to do that. It gets rid of this uh, cramping influence of this uh, E5 pawn, or tries to. Okay, so rook g6 is a mistake because he attacks it with the knight, and I really don't have any good moves uh, other than to go back to e6 where I came from, but he still has an advantage. So now uh, now white is on the attack here, and uh, my position is getting more and more difficult. Let's see. Yeah, I'm just um, trying to uh, chase his queen away, which I eventually succeed in doing and, and activating my other bishop. But this g5 move, locking in my bishop, yeah, maybe is not most accurate. It says rook takes or knight to f7. Yeah, my knight, uh, yeah, somehow my pieces just ended up on awkward squares. My knight over here uh, still is not getting back into the game, and that was constantly a thorn in my side. So, and, and white very logically is bringing his pieces in to uh, attack queen f3. And um, so I'm, I'm still trying to get my knight into the game. That's why I'm moving my king around like this. I'm just trying to find some squares my knight can go to because these, these squares are taken. And uh, so that leaves these squares, and then this is covered by the, the queen. And also from here, where does the knight go? Uh, again, doesn't have anywhere to go from there. So maybe, uh, I guess the plan maybe should be, if let's erase some of these arrows. Plan should be knight to here to here to here. That would be a good square, but it's kind of a slow plan. So that would probably be a better idea if we back up. Yeah, in this position, I could have uh, tried that idea here. Knight here, 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 or something. That could be tried. And yeah, knight f7 is the engine recommended move. Okay. So uh, it's just difficult. I, I was having trouble finding a way to activate my knight, and now he comes in with uh, a winning attack. I didn't want to trade pieces because he's up material. So I try to keep my queen and uh, block up the pawns over here. <clears throat> and, uh, well, my bishop had nowhere to go, so he forced that trade of the bishop. I don't really want to trade pieces, but I really have no choice there. And then uh, I finally I'm trying to get my knight into the game. I hit the idea of the knight f7. But it's too late at this point because his queen comes over after knight d8. Yeah, there's a mate in two on the board. Queen comes over to uh, h8, and there's just no way to stop the uh, checkmate. So uh, we played it out. I finally got my uh, <laughs> knight to uh, to this lovely square, but I made it on the next move, so it's too late. If I just had one more move, I could play knight here, check, forking his king and queen. <laughs> so it's a funny uh, final position, but uh, uh, mate counts. <laughs> he, when, uh, when he delivers the mate first, I don't get to play my uh, check and win queen. <laughs> Okay, so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.